This boy has clearly been dead for 12 years. Yet, he suddenly woke up on the roof. He only felt that he had slept for a long time. He dreamt he went to a hotel called Deluna, and he became the manager for 12 years. At this moment, he thought it was almost time for class. He hurriedly returned to the classroom, but he realized he didn't recognize anyone. Could it be that he entered the wrong class? At that moment, the teacher walked in. Seeing him in an old-style school uniform, she was surprised. This style was from 12 years ago. She thought he came to cause trouble on purpose. She prepared to call the security. The boy saw that things were not looking good. He ran out of the teaching building. He looked back. The date displayed was surprisingly 2017. Shouldn't it be 2005 now? How did I sleep for 12 years? What about my younger siblings at home? He rushed home all the way. After pushing the door open, there wasn't the expected crowd greeting him warmly. Only empty tables and a strange environment remained. This left him very puzzled. He really wanted to find someone to clarify things. He happened to meet the owner of the house when he went out, but was mistaken by the owner as a thief. He quickly explained, but the homeowner didn't pay attention, kept shouting to send him to the police station. In his anxiety, he pushed with his hand, and unexpectedly pushed the owner several meters away. He looked at his hands in astonishment. What on earth is going on? Coming back to his senses, he quickly went to help the homeowner, cleaning up the overturned table, but unexpectedly was knocked out by the owner with a stick. When he woke up, he was already in the hospital. A large wound was on his forehead, and a police officer was investigating next to him, asking his name and date of birth. The boy answered truthfully, My name is Sung Hae Sung. My birthday is June 7, 1987. The police officer was very surprised when he heard this. Someone born in 1987 would now be 31 years old. Are you trying to play me? At this time, the nurse also bandaged the wound, telling the boy that he had 30 stitches on his forehead. Be careful not to get infected. Remember to get antibiotics later. Seeing that he wasn't telling the truth, the officer took him straight to the police station. Once again, they asked the boy for his name and date of birth. The boy was very helpless, saying he really wasn't lying. The police officer was very angry. If we find out it's false, then you'll be charged with trespassing and obstructing official duties, adding crime to crime. But upon checking, they found that the information was correct, but it showed that he was deceased. He was very puzzled. He prepared to report to his superiors. Meanwhile, Hei Sung went to the restroom to wash his face. He found that the wound on his forehead had already healed, without any trace of stitches. This made him even more puzzled. What on earth happened to me? Just as he was about to leave the restroom, he met a police officer, who was shocked by the identity on his school uniform. It was his childhood friend, Hei Sung, but he had been dead for 12 years, and the voice was exactly the same. He was stunned, remembering that today was the anniversary of Hei Sung's death. Could it be a ghost in front of him? At this moment, Hei Sung also noticed his name, recognizing him as his high school classmate, Ho Bang, and quickly started questioning him. He fainted on the spot. When he woke up again, the two were sitting in a noodle shop. Ho Bang looked at Hei Sung, who hadn't eaten noodles in 12 years, and still couldn't believe what he was seeing. He tremblingly reached out to touch him, and felt warmth, confirming that the person in front of him was real. At that moment, Hei Sung asked him, How is my girlfriend Yun Won doing? Ho Bang didn't dare to look into his eyes, and hesitated to say, We haven't been in touch much in the past 12 years. I don't know how she's been. Hei Sung was very puzzled, wondering why their close knit group from the past, had become like this. At that moment, Ho Bang asked him, Do you really not remember what happened that day? Hei Sung recalled his memories of the previous day. As usual, he prepared breakfast, took care of his younger siblings, and went to school with Yun Won. Because it was his birthday, he boldly asked Yun Won for a kiss, and got scolded for being a pervert. At school, he delivered food to his younger brother, and found out he had been beaten. Hei Sung was very angry, and went straight to the bully. They were separated by their classmates. It turned out the bully had just transferred to the school, and had been provoking Hei Sung multiple times because he heard Hei Sung was a good fighter. But Hei Sung ignored him, so the bully used this dirty trick to beat up his younger brother. Hei Sung yelled out in anger that he would kill him, but was promptly pulled away by Ho Bang. Yun Won also tried to persuade Hei Sung. You were suspended in the second year of high school because of fighting. If you fight again, you'll be expelled. There's only half a year left until graduation. Just bear with it. Hei Sung responded, he bullied my younger brother. I can't just let it go. Suddenly, Yun Won stood up, and said she was going to confront that bastard, pull out all his hair, and kick him where it hurts, to make sure he could never have descendants. At this point, Hei Sung also calmed down. He grabbed Yun Won and promised he would endure it for her sake. That evening, Yun Won went to Hei Sung's house to prepare a birthday surprise. Just then, Hei Sung called saying he was coming to see her. Yun Won quickly lied that she left her wallet in the art class, and asked Hei Sung to go back and get it. Hei Sung searched for a long time but couldn't find the wallet. Just as he was about to go home, he was shocked by a scene on the ground. The bully he had fought with during the day was lying in a pool of blood. He checked and the bully was still alive, so he quickly rode his bicycle to call for an ambulance. As he was passing an intersection, suddenly...
At that moment, Hei Sung realized that he had died 12 years ago, which is why he still looked like his high school self. He grabbed Ho Bang in panic, asking questions. Well, <laughs> Unable to accept the reality, he shouted loudly to vent, causing all the lights to go out. He asked Ho Bang how his family had been. Ho Bang said he hadn't been in touch much, but he knew his younger brother's work address. He brought Hei Sung to the destination. While waiting downstairs, they happened to meet Xiao Mei, a high school classmate. Xiao Mei saw Hei Sung, who was clearly dead, and fainted on the spot out of fear. Ho Bang hurriedly took him to change clothes, so as not to scare more people. After disguising himself, Hei Sung came to find his brother. He just saw someone beating up another person. He couldn't understand how his brother, who was once a top student, had now become a gangster. Hei Sung went up upstairs to find his brother, but there were too many offices, he didn't know which room his brother was in, at this moment, his ears suddenly became extremely sensitive, and he could hear the sounds from each room, even the sound of a phone call from tens of meters away, could be heard very clearly, he then heard his brother's voice coming from one of the rooms, when he got to the door, he heard the gangsters asking his brother to get money from Yun Wan, his brother was being beaten for refusing, he rushed in to stop it, his brother took the chance to slip away, but didn't notice it was his brother who saved him, the long haired guy saw this and wanted to chase after him, but was stopped by Hei Sun. He was about to make a move, but was directly pushed away several meters by Hei Sun. The gangster boss saw his men being beaten, picked up a steel pipe and planned to teach Hei Sun a lesson, but the result was the same. Hei Sung grabbed the gangster boss, and asked where his brother was going. The boss quickly handed him a business card, which had Yun Wan's address on it. Hei Sung thought he had finally found Yun Wan, and took a bus to find her. At this moment, a strange old man suddenly stood next to him, and asked him when he arrived. It shouldn't have been long, he thought. Hei Sung didn't understand what he meant, and looked puzzled as the old man got off the bus. Then, Hei Sung arrived at Yun Wan's house, and excitedly pressed the doorbell, thinking he could finally see his beloved. He was both nervous and hopeful, but after the doorbell rang for a while, no one opened the door. He could only wait, and waited until night. The gangster boss came with a group of underlings for revenge, and under the director's arrangement, Hei Sung didn't dare to use his superpowers to fight back, and was knocked out. It started to rain heavily at midnight, and when Yun Wan came home, she saw someone lying on the ground. Upon closer inspection, she found out he looked exactly like her first love. She placed him on the sofa. She stared at the face that was both familiar and strange. Yun Wan reminisced about her high school days, the sweet times they spent together. But reason told her it was just a coincidence. Yun Wan made a call to the police. But as the call connected, she heard. Yun Wan was so scared that she dropped her phone. Her other hand couldn't stop trembling. She hastily lied that she dialed the wrong number. She thought she must have heard wrong. But looking at the man in front of her, who resembled Hei Sung, she couldn't help but recall 12 years ago. The scene at Hei Sung's funeral. She has always felt extremely guilty. If she hadn't asked Hei Sung to fetch her wallet. Hei Sung wouldn't have died. It was all her fault. The next morning, Yun Wan saw that he hadn't woken up. She left a note and departed, and the wound on Hei Sung's body was healing at a visibly rapid pace. Soon after, he woke up. He saw Yun Wan's photo on the fridge, and felt very happy. At this moment, he realized he was in Yun Wan's home. On the other side, Ho Bang found his high school classmates, saying he had seen Hei Sung. Everyone thought he was talking nonsense. Ho Bang pointed to Hei Sung's clothes for everyone to see, which still had his name tag on it. This was something he had personally taken off. Although he wasn't sure if the other party was a human or a ghost, he definitely existed in reality. At this time, Yun Wan realized that the person she saved yesterday was indeed Hei Sung. She immediately found an excuse to leave. She hurriedly ran back home, but found no trace of Hei Sung at home. She felt very disheartened, sitting on the sofa thinking that Hei Sung had already left. At that moment, Hei Sung came out of the bathroom, saw Yun Wan had returned, and greeted her with a smile, exclaiming how she had grown into an adult, asking how she had been over the years. Yun Wan still could couldn't believe the reality before her eyes. Faced with Hei Sung's warmth, she felt a bit scared. Just as she wondered how Hei Sung's wounds had healed, the landlord came over demanding rent, pointing at Yun Wan and scolding her harshly, saying she hadn't paid rent for three months. How could a young person do this? He berated. The landlord spewed a string of cruel words. Hei Sung, standing by, couldn't bear to watch, but was stopped by Yun Wan. She apologized to the landlord with a placating smile, promising to pay up by the next week. Hei Sung was perplexed, wondering why she couldn't even afford the rent, and had even racked up high interest debts. Yun Wan offered no explanation. Hei Sung reflected upon himself, feeling that he might have been too harsh earlier. Everyone has their difficult times, he thought. He bought two popsicles, intending to apologize to Yun Wan, but saw her chatting and laughing with another man. He felt a 
pang of jealousy. Could that be Ying Wan's boyfriend? After returning home, he apologized to Ying Wan, saying that seeing her felt like it had only been a day since they last met. Forgetting the 12 year gap in between, Ying Wan understood his feelings. Hei Sung then jokingly said, about the day she asked him to fetch her wallet, wondering if she played a prank on him, insinuating there was no wallet to begin with, asking her to apologize. To his surprise, Yun Wan got extremely emotional, asking if he returned just to make her apologize. If so, she wanted him to leave, never wanting to see him again. Hei Sung was at a loss, wondering why Yun Wan reacted so strongly. By midnight, when Hei Sung noticed Yun Wan hadn't returned, he opened the door to search for her, only to bump into his younger brother, there to collect debts. He was scared and ran away quickly. He accidentally fell when going down the stairs. Hei Sung caught up with him. He knelt on the ground and kowtowed. He begged his brother to go back quickly. He dared not ask his girlfriend for debt anymore. Hei Sung questioned him. Why have you become a thug now? Young Jun angrily said. It's all because you are a murderer. I became the brother of a murderer. The good family was torn apart because of this. Go away. Never show up again. After saying that, he ran away. But Hei Sung was very puzzled standing there. Why had he become a murderer? He found Ho Bang to inquire about the facts. Ho Bang then told him. Because the school bully died in the art room, everyone thought you were the murderer. Hei Sung asked if Yun Wan thought the same. Ho Bang explained to him, Yun Wan always felt that she had asked you to go to the art room, which led to your death, so she felt very guilty. She dropped out of school after your death, and even avoided them. Three years ago, when grandma passed away, a lot of money was spent on hospital aid, and all of it was paid by Yun Wan. The high interest debt was also owed then. Only then did Hei Sung realize, that in the 12 years he was not around, Yun Wan had given up so much. He hurriedly ran home, found Yun Wan and told her that his death had nothing to do with her. She didn't need to blame herself, and he was not a murderer either. Hearing Hei Sung say this, Yun Wan shed tears. The grievances of 12 years were finally released. <laughs> at night, Hei Sung wore Yun Wan's clothes. He was laughed at by others. Hei Sung looked at the clothes he was wearing and felt helpless. Then he helped Yun Wan pack her things. He accidentally flipped to a set of small clothes. He was frightened by the bright design. It was the first time he had seen such a thing in his life. Yun Wan quickly snatched it away, saying it was a gift from a friend. She had never worn it before. While packing other things, Hei Sung saw the beer can pull ring left from high school. He remembered skipping school in high school to accompany Yun Wan to find her mother in another city. But they found out that she had already started a new family. Yun Wan went up to greet her, but her mother pretended not to recognize her. Angry, Hei Sung threw a stone at her car. He was chased by the security for a day after being seen. That night, Yun Wan wanted to drink another can of beer. Hei Sung thought students shouldn't do this, but Yun Wan wanted to go herself. He had to take advantage of the shopkeeper dozing off, took a can of beer, left the money and hurriedly ran away. The pull ring of the beer, he also used it as a ring, and personally put it on Yun Wan's finger. He didn't expect that she had kept it till now. The next day, Hei Sung sent Yun Wan to work at the bus stop, and unexpectedly found his younger brother nearby. He quickly followed him. He ran all the way to the end of the alley. He happened to bump into Ho Bang. He explained to Young Jun, this is your real brother. Young Jun looked incredulously at Hei Sung. He slapped himself hard several times. He could feel the pain. It seems it's not a dream. Hei Sung asked his younger brother to take him to the gang leader. Then he gave them a fierce lesson. With a casual push of his hand, the two of them flew out tens of meters. He lifted the two up like picking up chicks, and tossed them back and forth in the air for two hours. The two couldn't bear it any longer. They knelt on the ground and begged Hei Sung for forgiveness. Hei Sung asked Young Jun to come in. He told them, in the future, they are not allowed to use violence to collect debts from Yun Wan. And Young Jun also washed his hands of the gang. The two leaders could only nod quickly. Afterwards, Young Jun resented Hei Sung, because he could no longer mingle in the underworld. Hei Sung patiently advised him, I will clear the title of a murderer, and we'll find a way out together. But Young Jun scolded him for being too naive. Even I don't believe you in your current state. Who would believe you? After saying that, he prepared to leave. Ho Bang stopped him in time, and invited him for a meal. During the meal, Ho Bang handed a cell phone to Hei Sung. It had the numbers of their old friends saved in it. Hei Sung asked Young Jun to save their siblings' numbers for him, but Young Jun said he didn't know. Hei Sung was very puzzled. We're all family. How can you not know their numbers? Young Jun explained. After the older brother got into medical school, he cut off contact with the family. The elder sister was busy with school, and she didn't talk to us. After graduation, she went to Seoul to make money. The younger sister was sent to an orphanage. The family has long been dispersed. What can I do? Hei Sung was very angry. The family I used to take care of. How did it become like this? Meanwhile, the older brother was in the hospital. 
flirting with the dean's daughter, he kept telling his future mother-in-law that he was an only child, with no siblings. At that moment, a nurse informed him that a high school boy named Hei Sung was visiting. The boy's name was Hei Sung. He was very surprised after hearing this. Before he could refuse, Hei Sung pushed the door and came in. Seeing him in person made him even more surprised. Seeing that both his mother-in-law and girlfriend were staring at him, he hastily claimed he didn't know him. He asked the nurse to kick Hei Sung out. Hei Sung didn't want to leave and wanted to talk to his brother, but he was forcibly removed by the called security guards. Hei Sung was very angry. With a swing of his hand, he sent the two security guards flying. This scene left the older brother stunned. Another guard pointed a gun at Hei Sung. Without even looking, he slapped the guard away with a single blow. Hei Sung really wanted to ask his brother what was going on, but he was stopped by a stranger, an old man. Hei Sung was still furious, and he wanted to use his usual technique to throw the man off, using all his strength, but the old man didn't budge. At that moment, he recognized the man's face, and remembered him from the bus the day before. 